What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, something I never thought that I would be sitting here looking at, but I am. We are standing here in my dream workshop and most of you guys following along have uh, seen this develop over the past year and a half, two years from a raw piece of land to the facility that we're standing in now. Although it is a dream shop, this is uh, what I've always kind of dreamt about having. Um, since I started getting into mechanics, I've always wanted a shop like this. But I guess even then, I was dreaming within the realms of what I thought I'd be able to afford whenever the time came to actually build something. And air conditioning always seemed like something that would just be way outside of any realistic budget for a shop this size. Turns out, much more affordable than you'd imagine. This right here, two mini split air conditioning systems that we're gonna be installing in the shop here. And that's right, we are gonna have an air conditioned workshop. I've only been through one summer so far with this building and it wasn't awful, but it sure wasn't great. It would have been a lot more productive to be nice and cool. Uh, you just kind of lose motivation when you're so hot and sweaty and miserable. So. Let's open this thing up and get these installed. So this pallet has actually been sitting here for about a month now while I have been going rounds with the power company, still trying to get our permanent power run. Uh, right now we are still running off of a light plant generator. So I think these things actually got here in July and I just have not had time to put them in because I've been kind of arguing with the power company. They want to charge me $52,000 to connect power. Really close to getting them out here and installing the power now, I think. So let's get this thing opened up, figure out what we need to do and uh, see about where we're gonna put this thing. So in the package here, we've got two duplicate systems here. There's one complete system, two complete systems. This is a Mr. Cool DIY multi-zone 36K BTU heat pump, essentially. And this is a, uh, the split type deal. So all you really need to do for this is knock a little hole in the wall. The top part, of course, looks like that picture there. And the bottom part, of course, looks like that picture there. That part's the only part you'll see inside. And you just have to drill a little hole through the wall for the line to go out to the outdoor thing. The really cool part about this system and another reason I decided to go with this is it is a DIY kit. So I don't need to have any HVAC technician come out here and charge up these lines or anything. It is all completely sealed, charged, ready to go in this box. All we should have to do is put it together and it should work. In the first box here, got a handy dandy Mr. Cool toolbox. That's actually a pretty nice little go bag. What else we got? Crescent wrench. Can't go bad with that. I wonder if they're giving you all the tools you need to install this thing. Yeah, because looky here. We've also got a hole saw, which looks to be the size that we're gonna need to run the, uh, the line out the wall to the actual heat pump. I am, uh, like I said, very excited about this. This whole thing, came to be because a buddy of mine built a similar sized shop and uh, this is what he is heating and cooling his building with and he was telling me how affordable they were. I had never even looked at them because I just assumed they were outrageous um, for something that could keep up with a space this large. This is 40 by 64, 18 feet to the top of the wall, but actually because I left the ceiling open and vaulted, we're like 24 feet to the top of the roof line there. But my buddy that has these said that he was heating and cooling his building just fine. So I decided to take a look at them and uh, pleasantly surprised with uh, how affordable they were. So that leads us to installing these bad boys. Because if you can afford AC, you're going to want AC. Uh -huh. Oh boy, here we go. We got us a wall template. That's gonna be nice. I like templates because it makes it a lot harder for somebody like me to screw up. 
This is nice packaging. I'm gonna tell you something right now. You're gonna see this thing reused around the shop in various videos, I'm sure, in the future. That looks like a grade A kneeling pad right there. Love having concrete underneath my feet for working on stuff, but I do hate kneeling on it. Look at this, huh? <laughs> She's a beauty. Oh, guys, I am excited. I never dreamed that I'd have air conditioning. And I, I keep saying air conditioning, but these do heat as well. So this will not be my primary heat source, but it will be a good backup. Remote control. Boy, I hope I don't have to read all this. Quick start guide, there we go. That's more my speed right there. Limited warranty, seven years? That wasn't something I paid attention to, honestly. Well, I think I better do some light reading here before we get too carried away. One thing that's definitely been on my mind is where do I want to install these things at? I had originally planned to put them over here and have the outside unit sitting right on the ground outside uh, the building there because they really wouldn't be in the way. I'm going to put a rock bed on the edge of the building there eventually. Uh, but my electrician was over here looking at things and he said, well, you can do that, but it's a lot easier and cheaper to run power right out of the box and up on this wall and put the units over here. The only issue with that plan is that we have a roof out here and that, you know, still isn't a problem. I could put those units on the ground out here wouldn't be an issue. In fact, being under roof, keeping direct sunlight off of them would probably be beneficial to the units. I'm also considering mounting the outside unit up there on top of the lean-to roof and bolting them to the walls up there, essentially. It's just a couple different options we could do and I have not figured it out yet. Hey guys, just wanna jump in here real quick. We are having a Black Friday sale over at the store, that's dieselcreek.com. Right now you can use the code DC hoodie and get $10 off any of our hoodies over at the store. That's DC hoodie code and link to the store are both down in the description. Make sure you get your orders in soon. So you be sure you beat that holiday rush and you can have everything there in time for Christmas. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. Now let's get back to the video. Let's pop the lid off of this guy and see what we're dealing with here. Oh boy, here's what makes this system really cool and one of the reasons I went this route. Um, these lines come completely pre-charged. All you have to do is screw them together and they purge themselves out and you're ready to go. There's no vacuuming and drawing in uh, Freon or... Well, we're ready to hang our wall unit now and that means we need this fancy cardboard template that comes in the box. There's actually been like an eight or 10 day hiatus away from this project. Um, and in that time frame, it has gone from needing these things for air conditioning to needing these things for heat. It is, well, it's 10 o'clock now and it's 59 degrees outside, but it was only 34 degrees this morning. Things are getting chilly in a hurry and uh, we need something going on here. I don't have my wood boiler set up yet. So until such a time as the boiler is up and running, these things are going to have to be my heat source. My installation is going to be a little bit more difficult than you would have uh, on just a regular drywalled wall or a wooden wall or something like that. So what I actually have to do here because of the ridges on the wall is space the mounting points back above the ridges. So I've got some unistrut here. We're going to use that and that is going to get us away from the ridges and give us a solid mounting point and I can catch two cross members with the unistrut rather than just one if I was using the mounting plate alone. The wall units are not super heavy, but you sure wouldn't want them falling on your head. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure they're securely fastened to the wall.
There we go, that baby is rock solid now. You'll be able to hang much more than the weight of that unit on here now. Now the beauty of the unistrut here for our mounting situation is that to mount our backing plate, all we need are these fancy little spring bolts that just click right into the unistrut. Push those in, give them a twist, bam, you've got a fastener and you can of course move that up and down wherever you would like in the channel. So, so for instance, right now I'm arguing with myself about where exactly I want to mount these at. So do I want to put the unit up high and leave the unistrut reveal at the bottom or do I put it down at the bottom and leave the unistrut sticking out of the top? The only thing that'll make this thing permanent is the hole I'm gonna have to drill through the wall for the lines going outside. So right now I can just throw a couple nuts on that thing, run them down, and we can actually hang the handler and uh, have a good look at it from down below, see what we think. All right, let's play a game called Don't Drop This Thing. <laughs> we pulled it off. Alrighty, we pulled it off. I think uh, leaving the unistrut reveal at the top is going to be the move. Whether I centered it or left it at the bottom, I think it's just going to draw attention. The way it is, you know, unless you're looking up at that unit, you probably don't notice it. And I can also throw a little bit of white paint on that unistrut, kind of let it blend into the wall. It'll disappear that way. So actually, that's a good idea. I'm going to take the unistrut off the wall and then throw some spray paint on it and we will be good to rehang it. All right, we got our unistrut bolted back up on the wall here. Paint turned out good enough for who it's for. We have our cardboard template sitting back up here so that I can mark out the center point for the hole that we're gonna have to drill through the wall for the pass through. Good, bad, or indifferent, the way I'm gonna do this is just take my screw, put it right through the center line, give her a few spins and that'll give me a nice mark on that sheeting behind it. Pull the template back off. There we go. This red line here is our cross member in the wall, so I did have to cheat the unit up just a hair so that we didn't uh, run right into that cross member with our hole saw. With that mark accomplished, we should be able to get rid of our template. Now we can rehang our bracket. Bingo! We'll check that for level and then run the nuts down. Nailed it! Still dead nuts level. Let's drill our hole. Oh boy, point of no return. We're committed. My battery's dead. If this was a Discovery show, they'd have made some commentary like, With the air conditioning season coming to a close, will Matt get the AC unit installed before the battery dies? Ah, drama! Hey! There's our nice, perfectly round hole, and we just have to kind of slice and part that insulation and then uh, drill it all the way through to the other side. All right, so we got our hole drilled. This is our pass-through sleeve. Oh, if I can get it back out. Yeah, there we go. I shoved it through there, marked how much was uh, sticking out of the other side, so we can go ahead and lop that off at the third line there, stick it back through and put our trim piece on the outside. Got this thing cut off to the right length.
Beautiful. Now we've got the ceiling ring that goes on the outside and I've got some ceiling clay that they provided in the kit and I made a nice little bead of that around the outside of that. And we'll press it in tight and it should seal up good. Oh, I'm excited, we're getting close here. We are all but done on the inside for our installation. We have to take our coolant Freon lines, gently bend those out this way now. Our drain line here, as well as the electric line, all have to be passed through that hole we just drilled in the wall. And uh, yeah, probably not too bad if you're in your living room or something, but up on that ladder, well, at least I have the staircase rather than an actual ladder, because that'd probably be tricky. Here we go, we're getting committed. <laughs> we made it at least. So it was a struggle. We were definitely riding the struggle bus, but we got it mounted. It looks good. So I believe there's only one thing left to do with the front cover lifted on the unit. We got to put in this smart USB controller, whatever the heck that thing does. That looks like the bugger right there. Ta-da! All right, cover is all secured. I believe we are done inside. Now we gotta move outside though.
Well, it's the next day. Concrete's cured. Forms are knocked off. What do you think, Roscoe? It turned out all right. Good enough for who it's for anyway. I mixed it up a little bit wet, so I was kind of finishing it, finishing it in the dark. And uh, yeah, I could have done a little bit better on the finish, but it's just to hold an AC pad. This isn't anything anybody's going to ever pay any attention to. Plus, the heat pump is going to cover up 90% of it, so good enough. Also, I'm sure there's going to be some comments, people saying you shouldn't put millings underneath concrete. Those people would be right, but uh, I think for this teeny little slab, it's going to be just fine. We're coming down the home stretch on this installation. We got the heat pump sitting on the pad. I've installed the hose chase basically there. This is the back half of the cover that goes over top of your line set. I wanted to put that up first so I wasn't fighting the lines in my way while I was trying to drill holes and screw that in there. So I got that done. I stuffed the borehole where we drilled through the wall. I stuffed that full of uh, fiberglass insulation, packed it in there nice and tight. So. We won't be getting any drafts through that way at all. We just need to connect our drain hose and then the line set to the other end of the line set and then run it down here and tie it into the heat pump and pretty much we'll be almost done. Time to connect our line set. There's just some protective caps on each side that we have to take off first and they should thread right together. It'll only fit together one way so you pretty much can't screw it up. All right, so as you can see, our connections are made there. Just thread those together and snug them up effectively. And then we are supposed to wrap this stuff, which is supposed to be a noise dampener, I believe, around these joints. It's like a thick, sticky, rubber, tarish adhesive kind of thing. It just kind of seals over itself. I don't know what this stuff is, but I like it. Make sure we bring our insulation back over everything. I'm not an HVAC guy by any stretch, but I know that if you leave any pieces of these copper lines exposed, they tend to condensate and then freeze up on you in the summertime when you're running the air conditioning. I don't think they'll do it in the winter, but I don't know. I've never run a heat pump in the winter. We heat our house at home with natural gas, so this is a new thing for me. I don't know exactly what this stuff is they gave us, but it's some sort of tape. I'm going to go ahead and use it to keep our insulation and everything covered up here as best as I can. We don't really need to concern ourselves with this is, what this is going to look like too, too much because it's all going to be enclosed in this plastic cover. Last thing to do, simple enough, we'll just install our drain line here. This lets condensation from the indoor unit come outside rather than dripping all over your floor. Now with all that done, I think we're ready to start putting these covers on here. We got our line set run behind the uh, heat pump here, leaving the excess coiled up. We have to remove these plastic caps and just connect our lines the same way we did up there. All right, so remember everything's pre-charged here. So all we should have to do now take this fancy Allen wrench that they gave us and open up the valves. So if you guys listen, you might hear the Freon run through the lines. Did you hear it? Put those caps back on, we should be good to go. Last thing to do here, we just gotta hook up the electric. 
the number one goes to number one, two to two, three to three, and green to ground. There we go. This MC coming in here is for the inside unit. We need to bring in our outside power here to run the whole thing. Exciting news, not only do we have one unit completely installed, now we've got our second unit completely installed here, ready to go. Got the unit sitting nice on our little concrete pad, got the hoses and the wires and everything all tucked away nicely behind the unit, tied up nice and neat, conduit run. Need to put one more conduit bracket right in the center here, this likes to droop down, I can't, can't stand that. Doesn't make it look like the conduits run straight, but it is. The other thing I screwed up on is my stub piece that I started out with out of this box. I should have cut like four inches shorter to get the joint right in the center of a rib. That way the joints didn't land on a rib. I have been using a light plant to power the building, but uh, the light plants aren't quite big enough to run these units. So we switched out to the old Lincoln Vantage 400 here that we picked up at the auction a long time ago. It's actually my brother-in-law's unit. He's just never come out to pick it up. So if it's sitting here, it's fair game. I'm going to use it. Let's fire this bad boy up and hopefully these units come on for us. I'm excited. Oh yeah! So I just put the batteries in the remotes here. Let's see what happens. Oh! So the directions say when you first fire it up, you should crank it up to the highest setting that it'll go to on the heat, and then switch to the lowest setting on air conditioning and make sure that it functions well at both settings. So what, what does this thing go up to? Looks like 86 is the highest set point we can go to. It says 86 right up there on the unit too, so you can see what your set tat. So you can see what your set temp is from anywhere in the shop here. And uh, I imagine it's probably going to take a second. The outside unit should be spinning now and it'll start building up some heat and then it'll kick on the blower. Let's go make sure that outside unit's running. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, we have to have that generator running because I don't think you'd hear this thing running at all. It, it's completely silent. Oh yeah, we got the blower going now. And same thing as the outdoor unit, just about silent. I really can't even hear this thing going. Throwing out some nice heat though, I like that. I gotta stand back a little ways so that I can uh, feel the air coming out of here because it's kind of aiming over my head right now. But that was one of the reasons I mounted them so high is that it would throw the air kind of into the center of the room rather than right down here at the floor in front of it. We'll give this a second and let it run and then I'm going to crank it all the way down to the lowest setting that it'll go on air conditioning. Alright, so apparently the lowest this will go is 62. Got to move it over to cool. Still learning how to use this thing. There we go, the set temp up on the unit changed to 62. We'll give it a second. Hopefully it starts blowing some nice ice cold air. Outside air temp today is close to 70, so we should be able to feel quite a difference between. Oh, that didn't take long at all. About a minute after I switched it from 86 to 62, I can feel it's blowing out some really nice cold air. This is gonna be great in the summertime. I am so excited to have these things. So I guess this one checks out. We're good to go with that one. Let's fire that one up and make sure it works as well. Moment of truth, let's go unit number two. Contact. <laughs> it's a really good day when I fake my way through being an electrician and it actually works and nothing catches on fire. We're gonna call this a great success. Oh yeah, we got some heat. Let's switch it over to the air conditioning and see how cold we can get her.
beautiful. Ice cold. We're gonna be able to hang meat in here. Right here, oh, I'm, I'm in the basking in the, we're gonna be able to keep it very nice and comfortable in here over the summer with these units. I am super pleased with this so far. I think they're gonna be even better once I have power from the power company that can run both of them at the same time because right now my generator will run one or it will run the other one. I can't run both at the same time. Well, I probably could, but then I, I definitely wouldn't be able to have all the lights and everything else on. So I don't wanna risk giving too low a voltage to these things and possibly damaging them. So I'm gonna play it safe and only run one for now uh, as I need it. We're still in that time of year when it's cold in the morning and warm in the evenings. We're still at that time of year when it's cold in the morning and pretty warm in the uh, later day afternoon. So we don't really necessarily need the heat right now and definitely don't need the air conditioning side of these things, but uh, they are here when it starts getting real cold. Hopefully I have my power by then. That is awesome. Look at that. You shut it off, the louvers close up nice and tight. Beautiful. Well guys, it's about a week since I installed the units. They have been working great so far. I haven't had to use them a ton. Um, I've been using them mainly in the morning time when you get into the shop and it's pretty chilly from the, uh, the night. We've had our first couple frosts so far this year, but uh, they've been doing great to uh, just put a little bit of heat in this space so that I can uh, work in here and not have to be layered up with a coat and everything else. So. The installation was pretty painless. I didn't have to have anybody uh, come out here and play around with charging the line sets. No HVAC guy with his van in my way all day while he's putting these things in. I probably drew out the process more than it needed to be. If I could have just buckled down and focused and worked on these things exclusively, I probably could have got uh, both of them done by myself in uh, two days. But I kind of played around and uh, bounced around to other different projects because that's just kind of how I roll, I guess, at this point. But anyways, yeah. Super happy with them so far, and I'm very excited to see how these things perform uh, through the winter and uh, definitely in the summertime is what I'm really looking forward to with them. Well, here's a little update for you guys. It's been about a month or so since I installed these things now, and I'm actually on grid power. So for the last week and a half, I've been leaving these things on. They've been running straight, and they've been keeping the shop super nice outside. It's been like 26, 27 degrees in the morning time and I get in here to the shop and we're still sitting right at like 68 degrees, which is perfect. As you can see, I have them set to 70 right now while I'm here working. It is absolutely perfect in here and they're actually running right now and you can't even hear them. I don't know if you guys can hear that on camera. I mean, standing here in person, if there's any other noise going on, you can't hear that thing. If you're dead silent, you can maybe hear it if you're near it, but they're really super quiet, which is great. Let's go outside and hear the units, hear the outside units running. Very, very quiet out here. So overall guys, after a month, I am very happy with these units and I'm super glad that I got these things installed. They're not supposed to be my permanent heating in here, but uh, until I get my boiler all connected and the heated floor fired up, these are more than capable of keeping the whole shop nice and toasty here. So, so yeah, after a month of uh, use now, I am super happy with these Mr. Cool mini splits and uh, couldn't have really been much easier to install and there's no way they could be any quieter. I mean, these things are absolutely great for making videos in here. I can't have something that makes a bunch of noise. So these things are absolutely perfect for what I'm doing in here. The only other thing that could be a little bit better in here is uh, my setup. You know, of course, heat rises. So without a fan up there, I'm sure it's hotter up in the rafters. I have not uh, gotten myself up there to, to feel that, but I'm sure that it's a little warmer up there than it is down here standing on the floor. So what I'd like to do is get a couple of those big industrial ceiling fans that have the, you know, a 12 or a 14 foot span on them. And that'll really help push the air back down here and keep things circulated. And uh, those real big ones are pretty darn quiet as well. So other than the heated floor, if we do anything else, that's what we're going to be doing is putting a couple big ceiling fans up there. 
So anyways, guys, I'm going to go home and mash this video together for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below. Really helps out the channel. Doesn't cost you guys but a second of your time. Also, the holidays are coming, so if you would like to help support the channel and maybe get yourself or a friend or a loved one a gift, now's the time to do it before the holiday rush. Head on over to dieselcreek.com. Pick yourself up some sweet swag over there. You'll be helping to support the channel and looking good doing it. So beat the holiday rush. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But that's all I got for today. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.